Welcome back to my channel, Confessions of a Dollar Tree Addict. I'm Marina, and um, this is a little bit of a different video. I want to um, talk about some emotional stuff. I guess that's all I ever do around here lately. I just love to flood you guys with my emotions. But, um, I mean, realistically, it hasn't been very long since my husband passed away. And of course, right now, I am, for those of you who follow this channel or may have landed here just because of my thumbnail or who knows what brought you here, welcome. Whatever it is that you're going through, my heart goes out to you. But I became a widow on May 30th of this year. And then in July, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So to say that I've had a lot of shock to my system and compounded grief is, um, I guess, an understatement. I wanted to discuss something really simple, and that simple subject is loneliness and what it feels like to lose your partner. Um, for me, I mean, you guys, some of you don't really know me. Some of you do really get me and really understand that I leave no stone unturned. Sometimes I just really need answers. And for those of you who follow my um, content about my husband's passing, you'll know that we even discussed this in advance because I had planned it out. Like, if I go first, you need to do this. If you go first, you need to do this. Let me know. I need to know what the deal is of the beyond. And um, I, I remember reading somewhere that there are like several stages to grief, but loneliness, I know there's like four different types of loneliness. I remember reading that um, in some literature somewhere years ago because I help women leave their abusive relationships. And of course, they are lonely. They're not just instantly happy when they leave their abusive relationships. People are traumatized. Um, so when you lose your spouse and become a widow, you have like this deep sense of sadness and grief and shock and all those things, especially my husband passed away so young, um, or at least I felt young, like it was a young age to, for him to pass away at. And um, that loneliness has de different levels of loneliness. I know, I, I distinctly remember that Chronic loneliness is what you don't want to have because chronic loneliness makes you believe that that is your existence. There is no way out of it. You find yourself just always accepting that there is nothing to do. There is no one to talk to. You're just living a lonely life. And um, I, don't, I don't think that socially I just am not capable of that. I would have to talk to people, but so of course chronic is the one that you need to avoid because it's like a disease at that point. It's social, situational, and emotional. Now, I would say that emotional loneliness is what a widow or a widower would feel the most because you have this deep sense of loss that you know, you you feel fine one minute and then you just become terrified of what the future holds. And, um, I feel like I was going through that feeling of loneliness when my husband passed away. And then I feel like I received signs, but the social and the situational, um, loneliness. Now that can happen at any moment. Like, for example, so many people have been like, oh, who's going to take you to chemo? And I know that, you know, it, it's met with love, but it's like, please let me figure this stuff out because I don't like to really think about the fact that my spouse is not here with me on this physical plane anymore. Um, so it's like, Another thing I have to think about that kind of makes me sad and sadness is stressful and stress 
breeds more cancer. So we're not going there. I'm doing all things that make me happy. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to do. And of course, grief is the opposite of happiness. And of course, the universe said, oh, you are grieving and you're going to feel this emotional sadness. So let's mix it up a bit and, you know, throw this diagnosis into the mix where I feel almost blessed on some level, as crazy as it sounds, because grief, I think, could have possibly killed me. And the circumstances and all the things that happened. And then I got all these crazy signs that, you know, I question things sometimes and I wonder if they're true or if they're just what my mind wants me to believe so that I can have some kind of solace. Um, but when it comes to the levels of loneliness, I can cerebrally think about them and at least recognize where I'm at in certain instances. So when John first passed away, I felt this intense fear, like, what does my future hold for me? Oh my gosh, how did I get here? So much was up in the air and still is. I mean, oh my gosh, my whole life is up in the air at this moment, but when things became even more out of control, I actually found a level of peace that I've never had in my life, which is so, so bizarre to me, um, but true. And part of all of that, I guess, maybe comes from like a life-threatening illness where you do become kind of selfish. But back to the four different types of lonelinesses, or loneliness stages or states. Between the social and the situational loneliness, I feel like those perhaps never go away. Even, maybe even if you are in a new relationship or your life has progressed to a whole new different direction. Because social and situational loneliness, I like situational I guess would be um, when I go to chemo and I see people with their spouse, um, now I probably wouldn't have wanted my husband to come with me to chemo, but the thought of him coming with me, um, is comforting on some level and seeing other people with their spouses makes you feel more lonely or more alone. And, um, I guess social loneliness is also, there are days where, I mean, you know, when you're in your fifties and you are paired off in a marriage, sometimes the only person that you speak to in real life, the whole day is your spouse or like, I of course speak to my son, but, um, you know, there comes a point where you're like, Oh crap, it's bedtime. And I spoke to my child for a few minutes today. He was out with his friends and he's busy playing his video games and I haven't heard my voice out loud, really. I haven't really spoken to anyone today. So at that point, I would reach out to someone and probably try to have a conversation because you do feel like utterly alone when you realize that you haven't uttered a single word to another person maybe in a whole day in real life. But I, you know, so those are the four stages of loneliness. And it's funny because during Christmas, I did a Vlogmas episode for people who might be feeling lonely because I've always felt like the holidays bring a lot of loneliness out in people and especially the community of women that I service. A lot of women survivors of domestic violence who I've helped, they do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. So as you guys know that I do myself, but to have had like so many shocks, I feel like I'm cured. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, so many things have happened to me lately where people are like, are you just associating? And I'm like, no, I'm just aware of the fact that my life is on the line things are important and I have to get through them. And I 
just kind of put one foot in front of the other, but also I feel lucky on some level because when push comes to shove, I was faced with grieving and succumbing to what could have become chronic loneliness or picking myself up and going back at what I like to do, which at first it was just to do videos and then a whole bunch of insanity ensued on YouTube and we won't get into any of that. And then I started to wonder if it was all even worth it. And then I realized that it was giving me so much love and feeding me so much interaction with so many amazing people who could relate and identify with what I was going through that I was really lucky to have this community because I'm, I'm just not, you know, I'm not in my twenties. There's a lot going on. And then on top of it, a lot of people as my husband passed away and cancer came into the picture, they marched right out of my life. And so it was very hard to like, it was very hard to navigate what that was all about. But some people are in your life because they want to take things from you. And when they realize that you're about to have nothing to give, they don't want to be in your world anymore. And so that was really hard to process, compounding to a sense of loneliness. But ultimately, the people who have stuck around are incredible amazing resources to help that are helping me get through every day um, and thrive and find myself laughing sometimes crying sometimes but mostly just working every day to live and create a new life for myself whatever that looks like uh, I don't know that I would have been able to do it had I not gotten this diagnosis I may have fallen into the chronic loneliness category and I have like a lot of questions about the afterlife and what exists and I just, we all do, I guess. And I mean, I'm in a life threatening situation. So I just feel very vulnerable. Anything could happen. I'm, I'm not stupid, but I also am lucky because I do have a great doctor and things are going to be okay. I'm confident that I'm going to, after this long, hard road, come out on the other side probably better and stronger than I've ever been before. It's just that it's remarkable the condition how. of human preservation on some level has gotten me to this point where I grieve a lot less and I speak in into the universe a lot and request information and somehow it comes to me. I want to know, you know, what does my future hold? And I have conversations with nobody. <laughs> but I am having a conversation. And then I get these insane validations out of nowhere and they seem insane, but they're not because they're really happening. And um, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. I have to say that I was very disappointed recently. I mean, I actually have to say it because anything that bothers my soul, I just release it into the universe and wherever it lands, it lands. I, you guys know that I've had so much trouble on YouTube with like being hacked and just all kinds of stuff. And I was like, just, tooling around looking for some type of network security because my phone has been acting weird and all kinds of stuff. And then I saw something that reminded me of something that I had thought about earlier in the month. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to give that person a, a call. I want to reach out to that person and see what they know about like death because they were like what I would consider a death expert. Um, so to speak. And when I was actually planning my um, husband's funeral, the lady who made the arrangements with my in-laws and myself um, 
the mortician. She was incredibly um, compassionate, empathetic, very professional, such a kind, wonderful person. And I was thinking, what does it take to do this for a living? Like what, what makes people want to do that? And then I remember that I knew someone a long time ago that actually wanted to do that for a living. And, um, I was like, I wonder what their view is on life after death and things like that. I wish I had asked more questions when I had the chance. And then something happened that reminded me of this person again. And I was like, I'm going to reach out to them. And at first I thought that that would be like a course of action where I could have this like conversation with this person and they could give me a lot of input on their view. And I felt like it was like going directly to an expert because you guys know how I am. I have OCD. Like I need to know why things are the way they are, what people think about them. Do they really believe? Did they believe? Do they still believe that now? What do they have faith in? And all of those things. And like I said, <laughs> my husband knew my husband told me, even if I explode lamps, you'll five minutes later be like, I don't believe that that lamp really broke. The electrician said it could have been whatever. Like, cause he knew that I just get like that where I question reality and I question what, what happens or what is going to happen. And as I've gotten older, I guess I'm not as much like that, but I'm definitely still that way where I just want to know what is out there. Um, what is out there? How are these coincidences taking place? There are no coincidences. And you know, unfortunately, a lot of the people who I've counted on in my life for, um, different types of support turned on me after my husband died and while I was being diagnosed with breast cancer. But this person that I reached out to, they just did not want to engage with me. And so I was like, wow, that's just crazy because I did not see that coming. So I felt like it was a sign that I will have to figure out what my reality is or my perception of the beyond, or my spirituality, I'm going to have to really process that on my own. I have faith. I have miraculously seen things happen lately that are actual miracles. I don't know what more to say. I would never have gotten to a doctor had certain things not gone the way that they did. I would not even know that I was sick and I could have just lost track in chronic loneliness but instead something happened I truly believe from the beyond that brought me to my knees like and makes me have faith and a great sense of peace but sometimes humanity will just let you down and I'm not really in a position where I can let those things affect me yeah, sometimes humanity will definitely let you down. And also, another point that I've noticed is that quite often, whenever I get um, looking for outside forces to fill that information um, supply that I need, uh, when maybe the universe wants me to be meditating or go within and search for the answer within myself. Um, I find that my phone either gets hacked or like I was mentioning, that was one of the reasons why I was, you know, on the internet seeking something out and then stumbled off and then stumbled onto that memory that made me go back to that source that I was going to try to ask some questions of. But then the crazy thing is that it's happened quite often during um, the time after my husband passed away when there was all hell was breaking loose in my life. I had no phone so many times. Or even after my last um, session, on my way home, I couldn't get my phone to charge. There was nothing wrong with my charger. My battery wouldn't charge. I couldn't record, which is why I couldn't buy those candles. For those of you who watched that video, 
I couldn't buy those candles because my battery was dead um, and I couldn't do the phone pay thing. Because sometimes I just use that, whatever that, touch the phone to the, I don't know, you touch your phone to the thing and it like sends PayPal the money. <laughs> you touch your phone to the Dollar Tree whatever and you could just automatically send your money payment and I didn't have my credit card on me and I couldn't get my phone to charge so I couldn't record those adorable candles that I'll be talking about at some point in a minute but you guys probably know if you watched my last shop with me you know the candles I'm talking about oh my god I was obsessed with them they're so beautiful they're like anthro dupes long story short it's like I've been joking with my inner sanctum circle how the universe wants me to become like a Zen Buddhist. They don't want me talking. I've taken a vow of silence and it's been going on for months, but it is almost like a vow of silence. Like I've always maybe asked too many questions. Maybe I've pushed people away because I'm really persuasive or really pushy or really um, assertive or really inquisitive. Or maybe I haven't. Maybe those people sucked. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I know that the reality is I didn't really do anything to those people. They had no reason to do what they did. And everyone has their own reasons. I don't necessarily need to know what they are. But when something happens quite often, maybe it's just a sign that the universe is telling you, just take a vow of silence. Or just take this day and be silent, but be in solitude. It's not loneliness. It's actually solitude because I can go and have a conversation anytime I want. There's plenty of places, plenty of people I could reach out to. I mean, technically not when my phone isn't working. I literally cannot make a phone call. <laughs> right now, currently, my phone is doing crazy things again. And I've like replaced my phone several times, but... I'm kind of accepting it because there's something crazy going on with the um, the universe. It's like moving people, places, and things. And sometimes when my phone decides to do this, I, I say round and round she goes and where she stops, nobody knows because I don't know. I don't know what the heck the universe is doing with my phone, with my life, with my health, with people, but I do know what I'm doing. I know that I'm okay. And I know that I've suffered so many losses. I've had so many traumas in my life, but I am a fighter and I also choose joy. I love to be happy. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and my actions perhaps create people's reactions. I own that. Um, given ample opportunity to correct those or um, discuss them, I would have been open to all possibilities. But sometimes the universe just allows you to be disappointed so that you can grow even further in your solitude. That's the difference. I've found lately that I have great solitude. I find so much peace and meditation time. I have been meditating. I bought those candles that you guys, if I have a picture, I'm obsessed with them. I don't know. I, I know when something brings me true joy, I'm obsessed with those candles because as I was talking to the cashier about them, the lady behind me said, I just find you to be so refreshing. What do you do for a living? And I looked at her and I almost burst into tears. I said, well, right now I'm actually fighting for my life for a living. <laughs> and she was like looking at me and I said, I recently became a widow and I found out I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm just kind of living life. And she said, well, honey, you're going to live it amazingly because you are infectious. You're so refreshing to have been so thrilled to find those candles because I was telling the cashier how I saw them and I didn't have my credit card on me and I wasn't feeling great and I didn't want to go to the car and then I went back the next day and they were all gone but I bought the one and I really wanted all three because 
I never get like that where I get obsessed with finding something from the Dollar Tree like on that level but I really wanted them and I went to like six stores and then I brought them home and they smell wonderful and I've been doing um, healing meditations and just trying to manifest wellness in my body and connecting with the spirit, whatever that is. Like I've shared with you guys a lot of things that have happened to me along the way that really have made me feel like there is somebody out there, something guiding me. And it really makes me feel a sense of safety that I probably didn't even have towards the end of my husband's life because he was so unwell that everything was really unstable. But I was a loyal, faithful wife. And and that's the reality. And to be a widow brings that because when you're faithfully committed to your marriage and you lose your spouse, of course, you're going to find yourself in moments of loneliness. But now it's just become something else. I find great solace in this inner peace that I have. And I was trying almost to ask people questions like, do they believe in the afterworld or because I almost want to discredit how I'm feeling because it's like how could you feel good you you have no reason to feel good your whole life is in upheaval financially you're kind of screwed you know every, everything is in upheaval but everything is great everything is okay I'm alive and I am going to stay that way and as long as I have the energy to keep going forward but good can happen from here because I'm resonating in a state of peace and solitude. And even when things hurt me a little, I mean, I'm not going to lie. A lot of people have hurt me lately, but I feel like they were removed. They exited because my husband passed away. They exited because I didn't have money to shell out or give them things or kiss their butts. Who knows? Who cares? And, or they just... My, my utility had been used up or this person who I reached out to, they've got their own stuff going on and they just don't have time for me. And it hurt my feelings, but so what? Feelings get hurt. Life goes on. I just feel like um, the universe is giving me my answers, that you know the truth. You know what's going on. You're not crazy. You were given all these signs. Everything is going to be okay. And it doesn't really matter because it's not your time to know all of that. Nobody knows that until they're off this planet. So my OCD has to be at rest. And I've been doing a lot of meditation. I love guided meditation. And I wanted to just put it out there that for women or men who may be grieving the loss of whatever could be their spouse, their parent, whatever grief and loneliness, and you know what, maybe not even grief, could just be loneliness. You could have social loneliness, or you could be missing your spouse that you're divorced from, and when you go to parties, you feel so awkward that you feel utterly lonely, and you go home, and you eat a pint of ice cream, and you just don't want to go any further. Well, it's like every aspect of my life has been turned around. I'm exercising more. I'm eating healthier than I've ever eaten before. I'm doing things that I haven't done in ages and ages because I just have to. And it's giving me a great sense of solace. Meditation is helping me with that. So I wanted to mention that if you are going through loneliness, the actual act of getting quiet and meditating and thinking of all the things that are positive in your universe are actually really helpful. Um, I don't really have like the answer to loneliness, obviously. For me, it was self-preservation. I don't want to die. I want to live. I have an urgent crisis medical situation that has come up. And so, but I am resonating at this really powerful frequency for this complete stranger to say to me, wow, you are infectious. You're incredibly powerful with your words and your energy. 
And I want those candles. It's so refreshing to see someone truly be happy with such a small item. And I thought to myself, you should subscribe to my channel, lady, because a lot of things make me happy, but they do make me happy. It's kind of like a game, like a scavenger hunt. I just enjoy, um, I guess, I truly enjoy discovering things and uncovering them and doing um, self-reflection sometimes or analysis and sometimes I just assume that everyone wants to do that along with me, but some people don't. And they're like, ay, 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 this is too much. I got to get out of here. Because they're more mechanical. Um, I was fortunate in my marriage. My husband, although he was extremely mechanical, he, he humored all of that kooky, quirky crap that I like to delve into because he knew that it made me happy. And he enjoyed me being happy. Who wants a sad me <laughs> like I mean people who want to see me sad that's just hard to achieve honestly to want to see me sad is kind of crazy because it takes a lot to really kick me down in order for me to be sad you got to do a lot and therefore it would take a really cruddy person to try to create that as my reality because no matter how sad I may feel in one moment I just find a way to find the beauty in even the ugliest circumstances. Yes, in my life, I have been afraid to do things and I have run away from them. I'm not going to lie. I've made a lot of bad decisions based on fear or insecurity um, that I regretted later. But in the long run, I'm proud of the choices that I've made because they've made me who I am. And right now, this time of reflection and meditation and becoming whole and well again and really pampering myself um, is filling me with so much energy and I'm going to need that energy because I'm in a battle for my life and when you are in a battle for your life, you have to use your time wisely to recharge and so um, that has to do with my diagnosis but as far as loneliness goes, I truly believe that when we feel truly lonely, it's important to um, identify what type of loneliness you're experiencing, be it social, be it situational, emotional, or chronic, which you never, never, never want. Um, if you can pinpoint what is creating the additional feelings of loneliness, then that is a jump off point for you to start to change those feelings and um, turn it around for yourself because you don't want to spend the rest of the life that you have left on this earth being alone or allowing yourself to feel like you're alone because we are not alone. There are so many people out there who feel exactly like we do or like you may be feeling today, like I have felt and I'm so lucky that I am able to articulate my feelings. I understand that some people think I'm nuts. I get it. But I find great comfort in knowing that what I feel, if I share it with someone else out there who feels that same way, it'll help them. But sometimes I'm not sure what I'm feeling. And I sometimes do need outside sources to help me and sometimes I get them and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I get them from the beyond. I don't know what to say. But life takes you down a path and you go down that path. And then when that path doesn't seem to be the right path, you just take a turn and you get on a different path. And so I'm on a path right now and I know where I'm headed, but nobody knows anything for certain and the universe will provide. And I truly believe that. And I just wanted to put this out there in case, well, I, I could look into, I guess, how I deal with all the different um, type of lonely feelings deeper, if anybody's interested. But for me, for me, just identifying that feeling of loneliness and actually having a YouTube channel, this channel saves my life. 
so often that it's unbearable. Like, what an amazing, brilliant thing I did during the pandemic that I started this YouTube channel and that I have somehow weeded through lots of subscribers and humans and just cultivated. I feel like this is a garden almost, which is, I know sounds nuts, but it's like a garden. Like you pick the weeds out and then you just have this incredible harvest of incredibly amazing people that are part of my community. And I could not be a luckier human being for having every single amazing person that clicks on my thumbnails and comes to chat with me, checks on me, emails me, wishing me thoughtful prayer and meditation and positive healing light and energy, cookbooks, recipes. You guys are amazing and I love, love my community, especially the humans that watch these videos because I know that some of you are like, okay lady, your life is a hot mess and we just want to see what's new at the Dollar Tree. We're here for the Dollar Tree attic. The rest of your stuff, can you please keep that to yourself? I know that. That's why my Dollar Tree videos get tons of views, but those of you who consistently comment on my whatever else Marina's doing videos, they're not Marshall's walkthroughs. They're not walkthroughs even. They're, they're life, life updates, and you guys care enough to listen to what's going on in my life. How could I be sad or lonely? I would have to be really absurd to not realize how blessed I am to have you guys here. And so I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. And I just wanted to share a little bit of what I think being a widow and loneliness feels like and how my diagnosis could have actually spared me a lot of that loneliness because now I have a purpose and my purpose is living. You can't be wanting to live and thrive and being sad and lonely. You have to find a way out of it. And so I'm doing that every day. And um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And meditation is really helping me. Um, I absolutely love this community of amazing humans. Stay safe and stay savvy, my friends. Bye-bye.